Hi, I'm Alif. I'm an undergrad at Carleton College. I'm working with Rika Anderson. And my talk is about the sulfur from pen genome and its evolution in deep sea endothermal vents. So I would just like to reiterate how important it is to study hydrothermal vent system. Hydrothermal vents are one of the most ancient, continuously inhabited ecosystem on Earth. And some researchers believe that hydrothermal vent was the place life arose. And if that's true, then life diverges into these two lineages, as we know, bacteria and archaea. And they invented new metabolic pathways and um, also, they out, the bacteria also and and everywhere like they also occupy new niches so that they spread spread out throughout the entire earth until now. And um, so along that um, idea, I would like to study microbial evolution, and I think there is no more interesting place to study it in, than in hydrothermal vent because it is one of the key habitats in life's earliest stages. And I have a few questions about microbial evolution and deep sea hydrothermal vents. The first one, what is the genomic variation that exists in this system? And then what, what drives this evolution? Is it chance or, or drift, or is it necessity, which is selection? And lastly, how do the microbes in hydrothermal vents diversify? So first, most of this talk is going to be about population genetics. And when I'm thinking about population genetics, I always think of the four phenomena or evolutionary forces, uh, such as selection, which is the necessity, mutation, migration, drift, and which is the chance, and how it creates uh, an interest to uh, give rise to this variation that we see in the population. Unlike in uh, multicellular organisms, in microbes, the variation can take a whole new meaning. So not only that their sequence can uh, be diverse, uh, the genomic content can also vary between the strains in a specific species. So some genes are shared by the whole species, which is the core genes, and some genes are not, which is the accessory genes. And there are multiple hypotheses how these accessory genes are acquired, including horizontal gene transfer, and also large-scale deletion. But I'm more interested in how these accessory genes are maintained uh, throughout its evolution. So there has been some literature uh, debate on this. Either it is through selection, which is the necessity, or some paper also says that it is through uh, drift, which is chance, or a little bit of both. And to tie it back to um, our extreme ancient environment, I would like to study the span genome evolution in the deep sea hydrothermal vents. And these are my two study sites. The first one is the mid Cayman rice, which is in the Caribbean Sea. And these samples were taken in 2012-2013 by Julie Huber's group. And the second one is the actual, which is close to the Juan de Fuca plate. And these samples were taken in 2013, 2015, by, also by Julie Huber's lab. So because a lot of these microbes were un uncultivable, I, we turned to metagenomic sequencing. And I followed like, the basic metagenomic sequence workflow, so I did assembly, mapping, and all that stuff. And finally, I did the binning, which is the interesting part. Um, and <laughs> And basically, I've been my context based on the uh, GC content and coverage mostly. And then I also found like what taxa they belong to, what taxa the beans belong to. And for this purpose, I'm mostly interested in the most abundant taxon or at the genus level that I found in my samples, which is sulfur ovum. Sulfur ovum is sulfur oxidizing bacteria in the pseudomal vents. And from the bin recovered uh, meta silver ovum genomes that I had, I created a pan genome profile, which is what you see here. So each of this layer uh, is a silver ovum genome. Um, and then each of this, um, sorry, each of this bar represents like the gene group. So if the gene group is there, then the bar exists on that layer and vice versa. So now I'm interested in like what kind of genes there are in the sulfur pan genome. So 
Uh, and also, I'm interested in how those functions are distributed across the, the gene frequency. So first here, the, each data point is the gene group, and the color bar basically means the gene function. And on the x-axis, I have the gene frequency from gene containing only one genome to the one in 22 genome, which is the core genome, basically. And on the y-axis, I have the proportion of the gene function across the column. So the most important trend here is that there is this uh, increase in proportion for translation, coenzyme metabolism, and amino acid metabolism functions uh, across the gene frequency. And the takeaway here is that the housekeeping functions are basically more enriched in the core genome versus the accessory genome, which makes sense. But the opposite is also true for the environment-related signaling genes, uh, such as signal transduction and so on. So here, I'd like to point out that the accessory genome acquire, acquisition and maintenance seems to be not random based on functions. Um, so that this kind of like points out toward the selection rather than the chance case. Then if pangenome evolution is really driven by selection, I would like to know what kind of selective pressure exists in this environment. And I would also like to know like, if there is any local adaptation of these pangenomes. So here, I realized that there are two environments that my samples came from, the mid Cayman rice vent and the actual vent. Um, so, and they're really separated by the continent, so they're really separate. And uh, so I calculated the proportion for each gene, I calculated the proportion of it being found in only actual genome. And then I sorted them uh, from lowest to highest and these are basically the least represented genes in the actual genome. So they're mostly represented in only mid Cayman rice genomes. Um, and most of these genes belong to the blue category, which is the ion transport metabolism categories. And most interestingly, they're also mostly related to phosphate uptake and regulation, um, which means that phosphate-related genes are more represented than in the mid Cayman rice genomes versus the actual genomes. This is interesting because in the Atlantic Ocean, where mid Cayman rice is, the phosphate content is lower than the Pacific, sorry, <laughs> in the Pacific, than in the Pacific Ocean. Um, to me, this means that microbes that live in mid Cayman rice could potentially have to innovate uh, due to this phosphate-lacking environment by uh, maintaining the accessory genes that they got through horizontal gene transfer. And this result is actually pretty similar to what Maureen Coleman found in um, the Pro Prochlorococcus uh, in the surface ocean. And just like, I would just like to um, throw, it, throw it out there because uh, I also found a lot of arsenate-related um, uh, genes in the mid Cayman rice compared to, compared to actual um, genomes. And this is also what uh, the Prochlorococcus paper found in the surface ocean. Um, I also, we also looked at the PNPS ratio, which kind of like suggests the strength of evolution on each gene that I looked at. Um, so basically, if the PNPS ratio is higher than one, then there's somewhat adaptive evolution or positive evolution. And if the PNPS ratio is closer to zero, then negative selection or purifying selection, which is more of conservation than change, happens on that gene. And what I found here is that accessory genes tend to have higher PNPS ratios than the core genes, and some of these genes also have PNPS ratio higher than one. Um, but I'm not really entirely sure statistically here because uh, this were not, you, I didn't really calculate the PNPS ratios using a maximum likelihood model, but just like kind of like point estimate for each gene. So. Like this higher uh, PNPS ratio for accessory gene might be due to either adaptive evolution on these genes or that these genes are less likely to uh, undergo um, negative selection or purifying selection. So, in conclusion, um, we kind of saw that pangenome evolution is selective, and um, we had several evidence of this. The first one is that different gene categories uh, were enriched in core versus accessory genomes, uh, which was the first one. 
Um, we also saw some local adaptation potentially due to phosphate um, content difference between the mid Cayman rice and the actual environment. And then we also saw that there was higher probability of adaptive evolution in the accessory genome compared to the core genome, or that there was some different evolutionary scheme of uh, accessory genome compared to the core genome. And finally, though I didn't really mention it here, we saw some evidence of gene-specific sweeps, which kind of points at uh, selection that happens in these microbial populations. And some more of bigger picture conclusions, uh, we saw that necessity was the key factor in the uh, pangenome evolution in hydrodome of Venn compared to chance. And so it is still an open question how important necessity was in early life. Um, the genomes that we see today have been molded by evolution from genomes back then, so we would um, infer some uh, connection through that. And finally, I would also point out that pangenomic variation, the importance to study pangenomic variation in addition to um, just single point polymorphisms because pangenomic variation is really widespread. And it also takes into account the uh, one evolutionary force, which is original gene transfer, that is not really taken into account by just single point polymorphism. And by that, I would like to thank the Anderson Lab at Carleton and all the crews that uh, did the sampling and the funding. Thank you. Okay, do we have any questions for Olive? You can come up to the microphone in the center. Okay. So, yeah, so the question was um, the connection between the extremophile and the genome evolution part. Um, yeah, like when I was getting into the project, I didn't really care about the extremophile part because I was really looking into the evolution of pen genomes. Um, so it wasn't necessarily like into just like specific to a uh, pen genome. And I, I realized that like studying extremophile is not probably the best like place to do like genome evolution study, but yeah, that was the data that I had, so yeah. Sorry. Great talk, I'm, I'm Paul, I'm a postdoc at Ames. Uh, so drift, the, the chance, drift is usually a, a pretty strong function of population size. Yeah. And I wonder if uh, there's a way for, in your data set, to estimate population size. Yeah, so, I, so first we kind of like had some, um, like the time uh, series data set as well, and we kind of like, I, I guess like I saw that there was like a decrease of uh, like the coverage from year to year, um, but I, I, don't, I don't really know like the, the what's it called, the absolute, um, population size or like the ethnic population size for the populations that I have. So yeah, probably there are like some ways to estimate the using uh, just coverage, but yeah, you not sure. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you very much. Um, thank you everyone for coming.